Hello, and welcome to The Bard's Truth with your host, The Green Bard. This is The Dire Wolves of Winterfell, episode 5.2, Angry Shaggy Dog and Wild Rickon, covering Rickon and Shaggy Dog in A Clash of Kings. All our Dire Wolf Bond themes continue in this volume. Of particular note will be how the forced separation affects them. Rickon goes through a phase where he latches onto the Frey Boys. His liking them is probably a reflection of his propensity for misbehavior. It is also clearly because they actually gave him attention, something nobody else does much. Meanwhile, Shaggy will continue to be angry, and he will also be very skittish around people, save when he chooses to be aggressive and attacks them. We also see in their story how Rickon's confinement and sensory deprivation in the crypts seems to lead to a closer warging bond, as happened with Bran and Summer. A Clash of Kings, Bran 1 The first mention of Shaggy Dog in this volume is a discussion of how even his howling is savage. Clearly, the theme of others fearing the wolves is larger in Shaggy Dog in reaction to his anger. This is also a continued example of mirroring and pack behavior. Summer's howls were long and sad, full of grief and longing. Shaggy Dogs were more savage. Their voices echoed through the yards and halls until the castle rang and it seemed as though some great pack of direwolves haunted Winterfell, instead of only two. Two were the ones that had been six. Do they miss their brothers and sisters too? Bran wondered. Are they calling to Grey Wind and Ghost? To Nymeria and Lady Shade? Do they want them to come home and be a pack together? We find at the next mention of Shaggy that the most likely reason for the continued mournful and angry howling is their confinement in the God's Wood. The separation from the boys is really not working, but Sir Roderick and Maester Lewin are not capable of understanding that. We are also reminded of the theme of bad things happening when the children and wolves are separated. Bran wishes he can be with them. We can only imagine what Rickon is thinking. I believe that the problem of Shaggy's behavior could have been solved by giving Rickon more attention and bringing structure and love into his world. Bran, as Rob's heir, is given this, but Rickon is largely ignored, to the detriment of all who encounter Shaggy Dog. Bran also makes an interesting observation, that the acoustics of Winterfell sometimes made it sound like the wolves were much closer than the gods would. I do wonder if he's partially hearing the sounds through Summer's ears. Could the same be true for Rickon and Shaggy? Two things we found that developed Bran's warging ability were the sensory deprivation of the crypts and the forced separation from Summer. At this point, Rickon actually has spent a significant amount of time in the crypts at two separate times, more than Bran, and is now separated from Shaggy. It is not out of the question to think that his bond to Shaggy might even be more developed than Bran and Summers at this point, especially if Shaggy is more powerful telepathically than Summer. And still the dire wolves howled. The guards on the walls muttered curses. Hounds in the kennels barked furiously. Horses kicked at their stalls. The walders shivered by their fire, and even Maester Lewin complained of sleepless nights. Only Bran did not mind. Sir Roderick had confined the wolves to the god's wood after Shaggy Dog bit Little Walder, but the stones of Winterfell played queer tricks with sound, and sometimes it sounded as if they were in the yard right below Bran's window. Other times he would have sworn they were up on the curtain walls, loping round like sentries. He wished that he could see them. Bran, not realizing the reason for the grief, continues to wonder why the wolves won't stop howling. To me, the reason is clear. It's grief for their separation from the boys. Rickon undoubtedly feels the same. Our author takes the opportunity to showcase this grief by having Bran remind us of the grief that triggered the prior bouts of continual howling. Bran's fall, Lady's bones returning, and Ned's death. It also begins the foreshadowing of Bran and Rickon's fake deaths, and Rob and Catelyn's real ones. Summer had howled the day Bran had fallen, and for long after as he lay broken in his bed. Rob had told him so before he went away to war. Summer had mourned for him, and Shaggy Dog and Grey Wind had joined in his grief. And the night the Bloody Raven had brought word of their father's death, the wolves had known that too. Bran had been in the Maester's turret with Rickon, talking of the children of the forest when Summer and Shaggy Dog had drowned out Lewin with their howls. Who are they mourning now? Had some enemy slain the king in the north, who used to be his brother Rob? Had his bastard brother John Snow fallen from the wall? Had his mother died? 
or one of his sisters? Or was this something else, as Maester and Septon and Old Nan seemed to think? Bran, never having figured out the reason for the howling, decides to join the wolves in solidarity. Summer and Shaggy hear him and respond in kind. It's humorous and touching. But their response is also emblematic of the reason the wolves are howling. It's mirroring. They all wish to be together. One does wonder if Rickon is also joining in. Oh, Bran cried tentatively. He cupped his hands around his mouth and lifted his head to the comet. Oh, oh, he howled. It sounded stupid, high and howl and quavering. A little boy's howl, not a wolf's. Yet Summer gave answer, his deep voice drowning out Bran's thin one. And Shaggy Dog made it a chorus. Bran howled again. They howled together, last of their pack. The last mention of Shaggy in the chapter reminds us of his wildness and ferocity, even frightening Bran. Lewin, of all people, would know Shaggy is a dangerous beast. However, he is much more, but Lewin will not be able to see that until the end. The Frey boy did not ask to be attacked, the maester said, no more than I did. That was Shaggy Dog. Rickon's big black wolf was so wild he even frightened Bran at times. Summer never bit anyone. Summer ripped out a man's throat in this very chamber. Or have you forgotten? The truth is, those sweet pups you and your brothers found in the snow have grown into dangerous beasts. The Frey boys are wise to be wary of them. Oh yes, they are the very soul of wisdom, those sweet boys. Finally, we get an actual account of the attack on the Freys. Let's preface this discussion with Bran's description of the game. In effect, it was mostly an excuse to be a bully, which Little Walder definitely was in the incident. Nonetheless, it starts with Rickon commanding Shaggy to wait aside, which he tacitly obeys. However, recall our theme of the wolves as protectors. Shaggy certainly took up the task, watching with Bran. The obvious ensues. Shaggy attacks in the blink of an eye, when Little Walder attacks Rickon with the stick. Little Walder, the bully, got what was coming to him. Rickon thinks it's hilarious, and I largely agree with him. Anyone who's seen a bully cut down to size knows this scene, and also recall our theme that the dire wolves can sense danger. Little Walder, as we know, has malice. Shaggy Dog simply was doing his job as protector, and he got locked up for it. Note as well the shadowing at the beginning. Finally, Rickon came running into the godswood, Shaggy Dog at his heels. He watched Turnip and Little Walder struggle for the stick until Turnip lost his footing and went in with a huge splash, arms waving. Rickon yelled, Me! Me now! I want to play! Little Walder beckoned him on, and Shaggy Dog started to follow. No, Shaggy, his brother commanded. Wolves can't play. You can stay with Bran. And he did. Until Little Walder had smacked Rickon with this stick square across his belly. Before Bran could blink, the black wolf was flying over the plank. There was blood in the water, and the walders were shrieking red murder. Rickon sat in the mud laughing, and Hodor came lumbering in, shouting, Hodor! 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 All I can say to Lewin and Roderick is, you punished the wrong person. What you say? Shaggy is not a person? Well, yes, that is strictly true, but Rickon, Shaggy's warg, is the person who was punished. In this case, Little Walder's injury was the logical consequence of his actions. Nothing needed to be done further by the adults, but once again they got it wrong. Rickon, we'll see later, had won the bully's respect, similar actually to how Rob had won great John Umber's respect earlier in the saga. A Clash of Kings, Brand 2. In this next chapter, after a while of isolation, it seems Shaggy Dog is skittish about spending time with Rickon, and people in general. I am a bit confused about this. I would have expected a moment of affection at their reunion. Could the angst of the separation have angered the wolf so much that he doesn't even want to be around Rickon? That's harsh, so we'll keep an eye out for more clues on this mystery. Notice also how Shaggy is very good at hiding and blending in. This is a hunting instinct we should associate strongly with him. On that note, recall that he was the one who snuck up behind Tyrion in A Game of Thrones. No sooner had Hodor entered the godswood than Summer emerged from under an oak, almost as if he had known they were coming. Bran glimpsed a lean black shape watching from under the undergrowth as well. Shaggy, he called. 
Here, Shaggy, to me. But Rickon's wolf vanished as swiftly as he appeared. A Clash of Kings, Brand 3. In the next chapter, we get a glimpse at another angle about Shaggy's peculiar behavior. Rickon seems to have accepted the punishment in his own way. Could the punishment be a good thing, getting Rickon to grow up a bit and behave? Is this also why Shaggy has been skittish? Because he knows Rickon thinks he was bad? Perhaps I was a bit hasty at my reaction to the punishment last time because of my views on bullying. Because it was true that Rickon and Shaggy were out of control. We'll keep an eye on this going forward. After that, Bran mentions that Summer can control Shaggy. This rings true, especially given what happened at the end of A Game of Thrones. Shaggy seems to be a follower. The boy, Jojen, looked about the hall curiously as he took his seat. Where are the dire wolves? In the godswood, Rickon answered. Shaggy was bad. Later. They won't bite if I'm there. Bran was pleased that they wanted to see the wolves. Summer won't anyway, and he'll keep Shaggy Dog away. He was curious about these mudmen. He could not recall ever seeing one before. His father had sent letters to the Lord of Greywater over the years, but none of the chronic man had ever called at Winterfell. He would have liked to talk to them more, but the Great Hall was so noisy that it was hard to hear anyone who wasn't right beside you. Later that chapter, we first see Shaggy from Summer's perspective. As Bran suggested earlier, Shaggy is acting as a follower to Summer. They act together in responding to the disturbance of the reeds entering the god's wood. Shaggy growls reflexively, while Summer ponders the intruders. This is typical of the anger in Shaggy, which Jojen easily discerns. Fear and rage is a perfect summation of his mood at this point. He went to sleep with his head full of knights in gleaming armor, fighting with swords that shone like starfire. But when the dream came, he was in the god's wood again. The smells from the kitchen and the great hall were so strong that it was almost as if he had never left the feast. He prowled beneath the trees, his brother close behind him. This night was wildly alive, full of the howling of the man-pack at their play. The sounds made him restless. He wanted to run, to hunt. He wanted to. The rattle of iron made his ears prick up. His brother heard it too. They raced through the undergrowth toward the sound, bounding across the still water at the foot of the old white one. He caught the scent of a stranger. Man smell well mixed with leather and earth and iron. The intruders had pushed a few yards into the wood when he came upon them, a female and a young male, with no taint of fear to them. Even when he showed them the white of his teeth, his brother growled low in his throat, yet they still did not run. Here they come, the female said. Mira, some part of him whispered. Some wisp of the sleeping boy lost in the wolf dream. Did you know they would be so big? They will be bigger still before they are grown, the young male said watching them with eyes large, green, and unafraid. The black one is full of fear and rage. But the gray is strong, stronger than he knows. Can you feel him, sister? No, she said, moving a hand to the hilt of the long brown knife she wore. Go careful, Jojen. So this is confirmation from the author of what we've seen written between the lines about Shaggy and Rickon. Jojen is talking about the boys, not the wolves. But the wolves are mirroring the boys through the bond. A Clash of Kings, Bran 4 In the next chapter, we see pack behavior as Shaggy joins Summer in threatening the reeds. Notice how they fan out to surround the children, something they did against Tyrion as well. Bran was telling the truth when he said he can't call them off. Even if Summer might have broken off, Shaggy did not stop. His anger and hunting instinct took over. His wildness. And he could only be stopped by Hodor. Hodor is loved by Rickon, as we learn later, so this could be considered mirroring. Rickon could also have called Shaggy off, but he is AWOL. Is Shaggy also mad because Rickon is ignoring him, spending time with the Walders instead? Is this making him even more angry and wild? The dire wolf lunged again, and again Mira's spear darted out. Summer dodged, circled back. The bushes rustled, and a lean black shape came padding from behind the weirwood, teeth bared. The scent was strong. His brother had smelled his rage. Bran felt hairs rise on the back of his neck. Mira stood beside her brother, with the wolves to either side. Bran called them off. I can't! Jojen, up the tree. There's no need. Today is not the day I die. Do it! She screamed, and her brother scrambled up the trunk of the weirwood, using the face for handholds. The dire wolves closed, 
Mira abandoned the spear and net, jumped up, and grabbed the branch above her head. Shaggy's jaws snapped shut beneath her ankle as she swung up and over the limb. Summer sat back on his haunches and howled, while Shaggy Dog worried the net, shaking it in his teeth. Only then did Bran remember that they were not alone. He cupped his hands around his mouth. Hodor! He shouted. Hodor! Hodor! He was badly frightened and somehow ashamed. They won't hurt Hodor, he assured his treed friends. A few moments passed before they heard a tuneless humming. Hodor arrived half-dressed and mud spattered from his visit to the hot pools. Bran had never been so glad to see him. Hodor, please help me. Chase off the wolves. Chase them off. Hodor went to it gleefully, waving his arms and stamping his huge feet, shouting, Hodor, Hodor, running first at one wolf and then the other. Shaggy Dog was the first to flee, slinking back into the foliage with a final snarl. When Summer had enough, he came back to Bran and lay down beside him. But for pack moments like this with Summer, Shaggy Dog is all alone, separated from the boy who is clearly part of him. With that, we'll end this episode. Please join us next time when we conclude Shaggy and Rickon's story in A Clash of Kings. Thanks for watching. Thanks to all the terrific artists who let me use their work on this YouTube video. Thanks especially to those in my family who helped in this series so far, including my wife. If you enjoy this content, you can also consider supporting us on Patreon.